Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Good job. Awesome. Look who's hanging out Hi. on the podcast. Yay. Beautifully Ellie Holcomb, pregnant <laughs> and just like always so full of joy. You're so sweet. I'm like, so glad to get to hang out. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's, it's really, I think this might be the first time we're seeing each other in Nashville. Too long. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like that's we actually see each other true. a lot. It's actually it's, maybe. It's either in, in the back of an arena or on a bus. Yeah, it yeah. is kind of true. I mean, yeah, we've been in Kroger parking lot <laughs> in <laughs> Nashville. Yes, that's how it goes, guys. It's glamorous. You park in Kroger, pray that your car doesn't get stolen. I know. And go on tour. Did Have you... Anyway, that happened. Yeah. A bunch of friends who parked in Kroger the other day got towed. No. They came back and they were like, where are our cars? Anyway. I think oh, was, about it every was time. Was it Kroger? Okay. I, I thought it was, I heard it was Walmart and I was like, no. I went... Last time I was at Walmart, they showed me where to park. I know. The Kroger yeah. down in... Anyway... You guys probably don't need to worry about this, but maybe you do if you tour. <laughs> or if you just need to park your car somewhere, we, don't, we don't park actually... at the Kroger in Cool Springs. Don't do it. They just might tell you. <laughs> well, Tips. the first time I met you, because I, I was talking to Chris, I'm like, when did we meet Ellie? Because I feel like I've known you forever because that's one of your superpowers. Oh my gosh. Love that. I'm sure you feel like that if you listen to Ellie, which you do, and if you don't, start now. Um, but whether it's like on your albums or in person, I just feel like it's an instant friendship. Yeah, I love that. I, it's true. Um, but we did meet at the Dove Awards in the girls' locker room. <laughs> the girls locker. That's right. I'm pretty sure we were. Yeah, we were in it. Yeah. So we're Kroger parking lots and bathrooms. Right pretty now. much. Locker pretty rooms. Much. I mean, girls always meet in the bathroom. That is where all of the good stuff happens. But, but because we're in a band together, I'm always in the girls' bathroom. Too. And you were. And that's, that's right. You would that's like, not nah, hey, I'm coming in. Chris is like, I'm leaving. Come on in. Gosh. I love, well, that's like my. So I was in a band with my husband for I mean we've talked yeah. about this but for like you know eight and a half years all dudes in the band only girl and yeah. so I just learned to like knock and walk in with my eyes closed I'm like y'all good you, you know is <laughs> that so smart you should clothes? I mean that's that's your life <laughs> I mean that, that, that's what we had in common like from the very beginning like you that's true. were in a band with your spouse and I'm in a band with my spouse it is yeah. it is definitely not the norm it's not no. a, it's not no. you know everybody's I can't think lifestyle. of many okay so let's start there actually because I feel like I've known you forever we have not known you forever. Right. That was the Devil Words bathroom. It does feel like we've known each locker other. Locker room experience. For a long time. Was though. 2014. Was it really? It was 2014. And <sighs> so that's as long as we've known you. And really, then we were just talking about, like, I love your shirt. Where'd you get it? Right. I love your sandals. Target. No way. Um, I love your song. Yeah. 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 And actually, we Can should. Can I borrow your curling iron? <laughs> I think yeah. so. We might have actually I think so. Done that. And I think, like, we both have these low husky voices uh-huh. and we lose our voices once in a while because we oh, talk yeah. too much it's oh, never yeah. singing nope it's talking it's like, no. <laughs> so i asked you i was like what do you do to not lose your voice anyways we were fast friends but back us up a little bit so were you and drew married first or in a band first how did it all start we met at university of tennessee okay. he was my best guy friend in a sword never date and he was it's same same crazy yeah I, I, so crazy so he started doing music he started writing songs when he studied abroad in scotland mm. came back he's like super um he's really smart yeah like he's a really smart guy we all mm-hmm. thought he was going to be like a professor like a history professor yeah and he came back from scotland he was like i think i'm going to be a singer songwriter and we were all like that's a terrible idea why would you <laughs> it just was like felt like kind you're of too out smart of the... no. yeah you're like no you're supposed to like go run a business or yeah teach history somewhere i was in a band with a guy like that he would write songs about former prime ministers and they're like and you're like this, this is too intelligent this like, is kind of niche yeah i'm not <laughs> sure who wants to listen to that <laughs> so but he but all you know started playing us his songs and we're like actually Good. So he would. I would, so before we ever dated, um, I would. He would ask me to come sing background with him. So I like sang no at way. his first show that he ever played, because we would lead worship together at like campus ministries. So we had like sung together like that. But so I would, I would sing with him. And what was crazy is he kind of 
he always says he fell for me like way before I fell for him. Uh-huh. And so there were times when I would be singing with him and singing a song that he had written about me and I had no idea. I wow. mean, <laughs> clueless. Uh, so we... That's goals right there. It is. I, yeah. I know. I'm like, seriously. Is, I just didn't, I was, anyway, I just never presumed that anything. And his, one of my favorite songs, I mean, there's the, the night he told me he wanted to date me. He played a song that he had written called I Like to Be With Me When I'm With You. And I was singing with him that night in Nashville. It was right oh. on off Melrose, this old place, The Sutler. And mm-hmm. I remember that moment of like he's singing this song and I could not breathe. And I'm like, this is so weird because I don't like him like that. But I was like, that is how I feel about him. That is so weird. That's weird. This is a love song. I don't. This isn't. But and that night, mm. he was like, "Hey, I'd have my heart broken really bad." And he was like, "Hey, I'm crazy about you. I really want to date you." And I know you're not ready for that. And I wasn't because I was. The Lord was doing a major work in my soul at the time. Um, hmm. But it was so sweet because he was like, "I know you're not ready. I'm not gonna date anybody else until you let me take you out. Wow. And you just let me know when." Which is crazy. That's beautiful. Nice. So we we need Drew Holcomb on the podcast I to know, give I'm everyone really tips. He's not here. Yes, he's, he's both of us far from perfect, but he was really, really intentional. He is a very intentional man, and I'm yeah. so grateful for that. Are you got what are your enneagram numbers? I'm a seven with a six wing. Okay. He's an eight with a seven wing. He's so an eight. Over, okay. So we overlap. He's uh-huh. super healthy eight. Mm. Sometimes when I say that. Hate it for eights. If you're an eight, don't worry. Right? <laughs> Sometimes no, people hey. are like eights. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, no. Sorry. So, Can't guess what me. I just heard for all you eights out there? That Mother Teresa was an eight. So right every door. time you're worried as an eight, she was a very healthy eight. <laughs> healthy eights are world changers. That's the that's, thing. That's right. I mean, it's that's like the they are like, let's get this done. Yeah. That is awesome to know. Yeah. We're really new in the podcast thing. Uh, podcast thing. Yes, we are. But the Enneagram thing, we just, it kept coming up. And so I had a feeling you probably Love had it. done it. It's kind of, I feel like when you're on a bus with a group of people, mm-hmm. I don't know, lately in Nashville, it's like... All of that mm-hmm. is happening. Mm-hmm. So you guys aren't like you overlap, but you're different. Uh-huh. So you obviously complement each other it's from really, day one. If you could, if you could be friends and sing backups, and I mean, yeah. you obviously are compatible. I remember on our first date, and I, we're, I, I was just like, this is so weird. It was six months later. And we went to a concert at the Rhyme and mm. see Patty Griffin, who oh. I love so much. And I remember walking into the Rhyme and he grabbed my hand and I was like, this is, we're not like this. This is so weird. And literally over the course of a mm. Patty Griffin concert on the second to last row in the balcony of the Rhyme and, yeah. by the end of the show, I was like, I have never, this is, I'm going to marry this guy. Yeah. It, it switched. I was like, oh my gosh, this is what it's supposed to be like. Like, yeah. you are sure. just fully right. yourself. Yeah. Right. We knew each other really yeah. well, which yeah. was so great because it wasn't like feeling like you had to act like you have it all together. It's like we already knew that we didn't. Right. <laughs> That's the problem like, when it's like oh. you aren't friends. I mean, it works in any way it's supposed to work. Sure, Everyone's sure. Everyone's story Absolutely. is their story. And I, I hate giving advice we never do because I'm like... This was just our story. This is what happened for us. Our Doesn't advice may be like terrible in your life. I know. You know because, because you know the advice that I that I want to give is like, well, we actually work better on the road than we do at home. We had to learn how to live at home together. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. Being on the road true. is easy. It is. It is a thing. What is it? It's that they call it. The porters call the transition. Uh, there's like a transition period when you're coming mm-hmm. home and then when you're leaving. Whether you're the one staying at home and yeah. the other's leaving, or if it's both of them, it just is like. And you've experienced both because so you started singing backups for him. You guys fell in love. I love that because I just rarely meet someone with a similar story, and I just so I funny. sounded so Canadian like, story. 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 <laughs> but I mean, literally, story. we toured like six months longer. Actually, almost probably close to two years, and he was my buddy, and yeah. I was just like, Chris is my best bud like he and he spoiled me rotten uh-huh. I just had blinders I just was like couldn't see how good 
he was in terms of like a mate for life. I just thought he's my best guy friend I've ever had. Yeah. And, so, um, but yeah, at a concert, my heart just like completely flipped. What concert was it? Well, it was actually leading worship at a church together in oh Victoria, but then we got engaged at, it's sort of like our Canadian Winnipeg hometown version of the Ryman. Okay. Love and it. we got engaged there. And so oh, really similar, no. but it was like when the heart flips, flops over when you already know them so well yeah and you're so understood like your heart is so understood yeah it's just quick it's quick so it but is, it's it, it is it's not like that for everybody no no sometimes no. i say i married my best guy friend that i swear in every day and i yeah. see people's faces go no like <laughs> i'm not that's yeah like people, is that gonna happen to me? I'm like, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Right? But maybe not. Don't right. worry. Yeah. The Lord knows He's got you. That's perfect. So <laughs> he's like, here's like the important relieved. question: Do you guys have similar taste in music? Yeah, mostly. Most. So, okay. so <laughs> true. Thankfully, he has given me an education because I mainly grew up on the Beatles, and like that was kind of it. So. <laughs> my dad did not do a great job and my mom didn't either of like educating us and my mm-hmm. dad's a producer like it's like we should right. have been more educated so Drew took it upon himself to be like here's the Rolling hey, Stones hey babe <laughs> Here, you know I was I mean so we play still when we're in the car together he'll be like who's this man like, that's so good. much he's better he's cool than to you yep and he played Bruce Springsteen for me the first time I was like this sounds like he's, he played Born to Run and I was like, this sounds like casino music. Like, I feel like I'm in an arcade. And he was like, no, ma'am. I mean, were you like, already end, married at this point? No, we were dating. The end, the end dating of the bridge is, is kind of ridiculous. Like, how many notes can we fit at the end of this bridge? It's crazy. <laughs> Love you, Bruce. Oh, man. Sorry. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I feel you. I... I like a few Bruce songs, which I yeah. feel like I'm not allowed even to say out loud. I know. The, oh, I feel the same way I'm about a, Tom Waits. Because, like, yeah. it, and people are like... It kills me. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I've grown. I've grown to, like, so... Actually, we just saw him um, do his thing up in New York. He's doing that residency at, like, the theater where he tells yeah. his story. I feel right like on. that would change it for me. I was... Yeah, I I cried. I felt like an yeah. idiot. I cried through the entire thing and felt like I was leaving the theater with a thousand of my best friends. I yeah. was like, right. we are. Mm-hmm. So I've grown to really love and appreciate appreciate you know a different music than I did before. And then yeah. we love a lot of the same music, and that was always a connection point for yeah. us. Is that at, y'all? At least it was the Beatles that your dad chose to focus know, it's on. A good, it's yeah. a good start. I it's feel start. like that's a better start than a lot of us get. Um, I think that's pretty cool. And if you started off in his band, was he sort of informing, like you were singing backups. How much input did yeah. you get in that? I was one of the, he's not really a co-writer. He has okay. become that. Okay, and so it was I true. I don't know how this works for y'all in marriage, but same. Who it was a it was that was an adjustment for us. I grew up in a really musical family, so we all almost all of us. Besides, I'm oldest of five. Yeah. All of us write and play and sing. Besides mm-hmm. one boy, one of the Will, my youngest brother, and uh, it was our family. If you wrote a song and somebody came in, they're like, oh, "I love that." Try this. Mm. It was like a compliment. You were like, right. oh, you think it was it's like good enough to work on? Right. So Drew would be writing and I'd be like, oh, I love that. What about this? And he's like, um... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, I didn't ask you to <laughs> be a part of this song. And I'm like, you don't want me to be... Like, no, I mean like... But producing is in my blood. Right. I know. Literally. Like, I'm literally like... But doesn't that sound fun for us to do this together? And he like has a very clear oh, vision. Oh yes. I call myself a um, in the songwriting world. I'm a pitcher. I'm like, what about this? What about this? And I really need like, I I, I really do well with a with a catcher, like yeah. an editor who's yeah. like, that's a terrible idea. That's ter- that one. Let's go there and yeah. stop giving me more ideas and let's develop this. One yeah. Else. Right. Right. And I'm like, it's fine. That was a terrible so, pitch. I don't care. Did you ever watch the TV show House? No. Well, he's like this doctor that's really abrasive, and okay. he has a team of people that 
you know, <laughs> he, he's supposed to trust, but he tells them at one show, it's like, you're just here to offer all the bad ideas that I won't think of so that I can just reject oh them. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's kind I of how, that. that's kind I of me that. when we're songwriting. It's like, how about no. this, guys? No, that's terrible. No. But we're we're never co-writing with House. That sounds terrible. I would I be shut down so quick it, if well, someone did that to it me. It is, but it is helpful for somebody to be like, yeah. Mm, that's what yeah. I that's what I don't want to do. That's so, right. so thank you. Let's hey. try something else. So I mean, if you're going to co-write, then co-write, I guess. But you were like, I didn't want to co-write. I didn't sign up for this. So that has been, it has been such a gift. And this is probably the same for y'all, but there are so many. I feel like I landed in counseling three years into our marriage, um, really because we were like, you're in a car, you can't really avoid conflict yeah in a Volvo station wagon which is right. we yeah for so many years yeah and it has been it has been such a gift for us to like have life on life and really like have to learn how to navigate conflict how to navigate yeah. your own pain that you bring in your baggage that you bring in yeah mm-hmm. it has been I'm just I am so grateful because I think I probably would have gone like 15 20 years before really realizing that I needed some work mm. <laughs> you know marriage, marriage like, will help that marriage come to the surface a yeah. lot and then oh man close quarters and not yeah. being able to run away which is what I did from pain at classic seven yeah. you're like oh that's painful great I'm not gonna think about it and yeah. go over let's here go have some and fun. Say, let's adventure anybody oh, ice cream pretty how about that <laughs> What else can we do to not think about this? Right. So, How long so have you been married? I feel like... We're 12 years. 12 years. 12 okay. years. So we... Uh, what are y'all? 13. Woo! Yeah, 14. we're close. Right. 14. 14. 14. Yeah, just plus yeah, a year. Right. Yeah. You just like saying 13. I thought it was 13 for real. <laughs> when's, your, when's your anniversary? <laughs> Uh, it's December 14th. That much I know. Okay, that's good. He's a lot more organized in life than me. That is... Yeah, that's the time. Yeah. What's been like the best, when did you feel like you hit your stride in married life? Cause you know, some people are like, man, just warning you guys. We got a lot of this. Just warning you guys. Year one. Woo. Rough. Year two, even harder. Right. Maybe by year three, you're really like grooving, but I don't know. Everyone's path is different. What Everyone's was it for different. you guys? Um, we, I think that third year I was, I mean, my whole life changed with counseling. I'm so grateful. Mm. I always talk about counseling. Yeah. Uh, really, from stage, I try to talk about it a lot because I think it has this stigma. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, or at Especially least for me, as it did. Christians, like, yeah, and, and like, it, it's almost like it's saying you're weak, or it's a sin to admit that, like. Just praying about it with Jesus isn't enough, right? Or yeah, and like you're that. like, oh, but this is actually yeah. really helpful. Yes, yeah, and um, so I, I totally was that girl that went into counseling. I was like, so I have this friend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, legitimately, right. like right. I was like, this friend is going through a really hard time, and I need help. And I, and I really Aww. was there. I thought to kind of like talk about that, and she was like. Intensive yeah. counseling. So it was right. our third year was probably our hardest. Um, and then we. Because you decided to really dig in. Dig in. And yeah. so it got worse before. And it really yeah. wasn't him. I kept being like, so does Drew need to come in? She's like, no, you're, it's just yeah. you. And it wasn't like it was just me, but she was like, if you get healthy, I really yeah. think he's going to, res- he was responding so well um, mm. to all of that. And so she was like, we'll bring, we'll. We'll bring him in. I'm like, cool, so I'm the only problem. She's like, no, it just is. Yeah. You're not being honest. I was a liar to myself, to mm. God. To... Did it come from all of your positivity? Yeah, I just didn't know it was okay to not be okay. Right. I didn't yeah. know it was okay to struggle. And yeah. I would. I knew enough to be dangerous. I would be like, this was really hard, but... God is faithful without ever really letting him reach yes. down into the painful places. Oh, girl, mm-hmm. I feel that. It's like we want to skip, like, here's, you know, where where we started at home in the garden. And then it's like there's all of this pain and brokenness and sorrow and suffering. And then here's the cross. And Jesus is the bridge. Mm. But if you skip the valley, yeah, it, it's like you kind of miss the power of the resurrection. Because mm, <laughs> you're not good. rising up from anywhere. So I yeah. just... Like, it's like I entered into all the pain and I felt like a kid. Like, Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to have conflict. I'd avoided it my whole life. So I felt like a toddler. I was like, 
I remember we got on a budget at the same time. It was really, oh, no. it was a rough season. I can't and shop. I was like, I used yeah. to kind of like, like myself. Yeah. And, you know, like I knew I was a sinner, but you know, I, I was like, but I'm, you know, I'm like pretty cute. Yeah. Can <laughs> like, I just say I'm a sinner nice and like, let's move on. You know, I try to be good. <laughs> and I mean, I was mm. like, if I'm really honest, I don't like what I see in myself and I don't like, and I always saw the world like rose colored glasses. I was like, I, there's so much brokenness in the world that I don't understand. And I was telling Drew this in the car one day, this was a turning point, Ebenezer moment. And I was like, I was like, so I just, but I don't really like myself or the, there's a lot of stuff I don't understand. Hard for seven mm, to admit. Yeah. And Drew, Drew was like so kind. He was like, I like you better than I've ever liked you before. And I was like, well, oh. that's ridiculous because I am a hot mess. And he was like, but I, I feel mm. like it's you. You're not hiding anything and I'm not walking on eggshells. Yeah. And he was like, but I think that you just need to take a, you need to just take some time. We were in the Volo station right? mm-hmm. and just talk to Jesus about this. He leans his seat back and goes to sleep. And I was like, what? <laughs> were you driving? I was driving. Yeah. And I was like, that'd really? be bad if he was driving. He's like, good night. That, that's the way it is on the we're bus. You go to, to the back seat and you're like in you're, another room. You're like another I feel room. like Chris is going to use this on me often. Babe, <laughs> you're going to need to talk to Jesus. Jesus I'm just going to be, be napping nap. over here. But it was so sweet because I remember saying that to the Lord. Like, I don't, I do not like, I mean, I mm. just, I, I am seeing my name need for you more than ever before I don't like myself I don't like what I see in the world and I not like audibly but just since God saying um I like you Mm -hmm. not I love you I like I made you like this and yeah and I love you enough not to leave you as you are yeah right and then I know that this world is broken Mm. and hard but I am holding the whole world in my hands and I've got it and oh, man. I mean, it was, I was like, oh, yeah, you can, okay, so we can come as we are. We can be a mess. Yeah. And he still holds us together. And yeah. so it just, it like, there's so much freedom that I didn't know I was missing out mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. And it changed everything, but it took a, about a year Yeah, <laughs> you know, for, for that to all be fleshed out and for us to feel like we're like, mm-hmm. okay, we're hitting... Isn't that crazy? I think we do think that if we don't, like, you know, my parents are married and, you know, like I don't, I don't come from a really broken past that you're like, I'm good. I don't need counseling. Right. You know, I'm good. But it's crazy that if one of you is blocked with growth in any way, married can't grow, like married life can't grow the same way. (laughs) And I mean, I married someone who enables my growth in a huge way. Which is such a gift. But I stand in the way of it. A yeah. lot of the time, and yeah. you're actually really challenging me because I don't think I've ever been to counseling before, uh-huh. and I can't figure myself out on the Enneagram. I thought I was a three. My mom thinks I'm a seven, and I'm sitting here looking at you, kind of <laughs> being like, "Oh my!" <laughs> <laughs> so you. because everything you're saying, I'm like, "Uh huh." Okay. Uh huh. Okay. I, well, I'm in it. I'm in yeah. another season. I kind of had a a season of really intense like growth and then yeah felt like I was in a healthy place and I'm like I just think I'm just so grateful that 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 God like he said like he's kind enough mm. when it's not stagnant it's deeper no. and higher up and I and so I'm like working through some stuff in counseling right now I've been yeah. in all these podcasts today this is like an interview day for me yeah. and so I've had like probably five or six different ones and I'm like mm. um and mm-hmm. I'm in some, I'm working through some uh, pain that I didn't even realize was yeah. there because right. I'm a seven and I'm like, I'm fine. Yeah. So it's like going back and dealing with that because sometimes when you're wounded and, and you ignore that, it comes out sideways. I don't yeah, know. So, sure. so I think for me as a parent, um, some of the stuff, some of the wounds that I had from childhood, which is just, I have like amazing parents who yeah. are awesome, but right. they were people yeah and yeah. broken totally. and like we're like broken people raising broken people yeah you know? it's, it's pretty it's crazy like we're going to hurt each other yeah. and 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 to let and allow uh god's presence to fill those places of mm. sorrow rather than just ignoring them has yeah. been so powerful it's so powerful and so anyway. do you feel like you were i mean you're expecting a boy 
baby boy for this guy yeah yeah boy okay it's a boy yeah so do you feel like I don't know when you're pregnant is your processing differently oh is gosh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure about all that. But I, Drew the other day was like, I'm not sure what you were like before you were pregnant. I can't really remember for a second. I was like, I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, but I, yeah. do, I think there's, there's obviously more hormones at play. Yes. And, um, it's just some people have such, like you're releasing baby three and record three will be mm-hmm. around the yeah, same. Yeah, around the same time. Within yeah. a month and a kid's, a, a kid's book. Right. Has, like you have a few things really, going on. Didn't really plan that. A few releases happening. A few releases. A person. Because <laughs> I always joke. I joked about it, which is how I think the Holy Spirit is so kind. Because things come into clarity on stage for me, uh-huh. a lot of the time. Yeah. And I don't know if, if you can relate to that okay. as a mom Absolutely. and a wife. And you're kind of looking at the needs of everybody. Mm-hmm. And I'm often not looking at myself or how mm-hmm. I'm like I'm not super in tune. And then I'll be on stage, and Holy Spirit's like hello, talking, and I'm receiving, and I'm just, like, often a mess. Yeah, you're you like, know? great, it's fine, Lord. Yeah. I'll just be in counseling in yeah. front of all of these people. people. Me- meanwhile, I'm, like, kind of at my mic, and then I'm walking back to start the tracks, and then walking back again, it's like, wait. wait <laughs> is she still crying? Is she? Happening? Are we good? It's like, oh, this, this, Can is, I start this, <laughs> this, this is happening now. Okay, I'll just, <laughs> and, then I, and then I, like, chill out and have some water. And, oh yeah, I mean, it gets crazy. real on stage. <laughs> And I mean, I think that is because you're on stage with me. That really didn't happen as much as a solo artist. Huh. Um, but all that to say, I remember joking, huh, I'm about to release a baby and a record in the same month. And it just like hit me <laughs> like in real like, time. That's a, lot. That's a lot of releasing. Can you all <laughs> pray for me? And um, just as I was thinking about you, because when I first met you, um, okay, fast forward from the locker room. Then we went on tour together, did. which was the really sweet. It's awesome. And you were pregnant with Huck? Huck. Yeah, our okay. second. That's right. And I wasn't pregnant even with our first yet. That's right. But I think I actually might have been, or just. I think you might have found out that you were. I think right so. After you, the tour. I, I, I still believe that you guys conspired on that tour. Like, <laughs> as soon as that tour ended, yeah. we got pregnant. It was totally. Like, here we go. And yeah. it was like, because we, we watched yeah. you every day. You know, you were FaceTiming, and. Yeah. yeah. And I did, we I can't literally. Remember. Did you bring. I didn't. I no. I you were talking to Emmy. Came. I talked to Emmy Lou on the phone every yeah, day. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. and but, she wanted uh, to see catering and yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's just so no, for around. real though. Like, I think that's why we uh, feel like we know you, and we've never even met Drew, but we feel like we know you guys because I literally feel like the Lord put you mm-hmm. on. We were on that tour to learn oh, from wow. you, yeah. um, and from someone that I could see myself in, mm-hmm. and just. You know, because we all parent so different and we're all just, we're all totally. unique and we just learned from each other and I learned from you big time on that, that tour and just for, on every level, on stage, singing and breathing as a pregnant woman, <laughs> looking beautiful, you know, sharing your story, Sweet. just in every single way. I only know you as a mom, but yeah. I guess I was like kind of looking at your life going, okay, so in a band with your hubby. And then you've raised, been raised around music your whole life, yeah. but you didn't really release music no. until like a little, like 2000, right before Ooh. we met you, 11? Yeah, 11 maybe, but I, I was still in Drew's band. It just was like... Yeah, just wasn't really on your heart to be like, I want to do my thing. Oh, no, no, no. No, so how I'm did... I'm like <sighs> totally a reluctant musician. Really? In every way. And I I did not know that it. of you. I love it, but I like... I just think the Lord has a sense of humor for whatever reason. The things that I'm like, I'm never doing that. He's like, oh, we'll see about that. Actually, yeah. you're going to do that. Right. So I don't say that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's I'm a pretty like, scary thing to yeah. say. I'm like, I'm like, Lord, mm. I just, it's not, not so much so whatever I say won't happen or whatever, but just, um, my plans that I thought the way I thought my life was going to be is so different than how it has turned out. And I'm what did you so, think? I got my master's in education. I oh, thought I was okay. going to be a teacher, an English teacher for my hmm. whole life. Stay at home, you know, like mm-hmm. steady Eddie, like thinking that is, yeah. was what yeah. I was meant to do. And mm-hmm. I loved teaching. I just, I loved it. Um, and hmm. swore I'd never marry a musician. I mean, I swore I'd never marry Drew. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So it yeah. is, it's, it is really, I think because as a kid, 
I saw, I just was not enamored with fame whatsoever. Like, wow. I grew up around all these do you, people. Do you feel who did like you just kind of are numb to it a little? Not numb, but like, you just kind of normal. Like, it was normal. And I was like, this job sucks. You have to leave. Sorry, for You saw judge. that. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. We're in our house. That's what we decided. Okay. We'll shoot it in our house so we can like, just be oh, honest. Sorry, sorry no, kids. No. If you're, you're good. This right. job is terrible. You have to leave. All yeah. the time. So as right. a so you kid, saw the, you didn't just see stage. No, you saw the whole thing. No, and like I, if my dad was sitting right here, like he would tell you, he was like um, so passionate about music and and the mission of what we get to be a part of doing, which is amazing. Yeah, seeing the impact on so many people's lives and hearts, but he would say. Like, he was a workaholic. He was mm, huh. in the studio all the time. And it was different back then because you rented studios by 24-hour periods. It wasn't in your home. You right. Know? There was like, some boundary. And it's like you got to use There's the time because no you got to be in the budget. There's no logic. Yeah. You're on tape, you know. And I just remember, like, I would go... We would be going to school and he would be coming home from the studio. Wow. I mean, it was... He was gone. And the Lord completely... Completely changed his heart, and he—I mean—he was a different mm. dad. I mean, and around, like, and he says, as a dad, which is such a gift to all of us. But to me, as a parent now, like, all I can offer my kids is repentance. Like, mm. I didn't do that right, um, mm. and and the love of Jesus. Like wow. here, and and so what a free thing as a parent. Oh like, man. Okay. Yeah. It's all right. And yeah. there is, all you want to do is the best, you want to be the best yeah. parent that you could be. Or, yeah. And it's like, we are not going to do that. Right. Well, and like your dad was stewarding his life and his gift. And I mean. The balance of that that's is That's a lot like, to balance. Like people lot. might not know, I didn't know, but your dad is Brown Bannister and the, and I, we met him because. This is amazing. Well, it's, it, yeah, it's so cool because what you're describing is yeah. exactly what we saw. Because exactly. Because we were oh, sitting next to this sweet man at the Devil no Wars. No clue who he was. Sitting behind Amy Grant. This is like the most <laughs> surreal night of our lives. Yeah, you're these yeah. These Canadians who don't know anyone. Oh, we just got to Nashville. <laughs> and, and, you, and you won the so award. Much. And all of a sudden, this man next to us yeah, just Ellie starts beat us. weeping. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, that's why we were in a locker room. Yeah, right. <laughs> it was fantastic. But yeah, all of a sudden we look at, like, he's right beside me, and I'm looking at Chris like, I need to hug this man. I'm not sure why he's weeping. And so he asked, oh, he was like, that, that's my daughter. Yes. I'm so proud of he her. He looks at us. My daughter just won. I'm like, your daughter just beat us. Way to go for her. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, it was amazing. We're like, amazing. And then Chris was like, that's Brown Bannister. Like, because my mom. Oh, no, I didn't find that out until like a week later. Oh, you did? You told me at that, that point. That is crazy. So we, our minds were blown in every possible way. We're just like, because oh, Heart in Motion was like my record oh, and like all her whole career. Absolutely. Oh, wow. So that. all that to say, mm -hmm. you're sweet dad he like we is, saw what he offers you oh he in a is tiny like, glimpse well and it is so it has been so redemptive in so many ways we always say like because he's been my producer so like right. the, we always say that it's like that verse from joel um that the lord restores the years that the locusts have eaten mm. like it is Oof, there that is, is like yeah. so mm. there has been so much healing. and so now like i'm getting him to i'm getting to see him be completely Completely engaged in my mm. kids' lives. Wow. So, like, in a season where he really wasn't mm. around for my a lot of my childhood, he, I mean, he was. He was not, like, in yeah. my head, but just not, right. like, super engaged. So, it, but I am getting to yeah. experience that. Through, and that has been, like, it has just been such a gift. And it's such a relief to me to know, okay, I'm not going to do all of this right. Yeah. But I don't we have to. get to be broken people, like yeah. returning to our, yeah. our broken, wounded healer God who yeah. heals all. Wounds, See, I mean, is, girl, maybe that's uh, why, like, all that you're saying, because when we watched you play that night, we all got to play, like, a minute, right, of our yeah, songs that's right. at the Doves. And when we saw you up there, we were experiencing a very polished, yet sure. honest and vulnerable performer that I wanted to be friends with. And I feel like that's the richness of your upbringing. Your story is so unique because you were around it. 
You saw the whole thing, didn't really desire the fame, but now you're up on stage in the right time. Yeah. And you're able to bring just such an honesty to it. Oh, thanks, friend. I, yeah. it, is, it is a sweet thing. When I was in counseling and started yeah. writing my own music, I was just trying to memorize scripture yeah. with my friend who battled depression to kick back at the shadows with the light. And mm. um, I, really thought, I really thought that I was just writing for myself. Mm. Like right. I just was writing the things, the truths, that I kept forgetting. I was like, maybe if I can sing these, mm. <laughs> that will That'll help. help me help it sink in. Um, that will help me believe. Mm. And for whatever reason, I feel like y'all are like, this is part of why the Holy Spirit is speaking to you on stage. But for whatever reason, the way the Lord wired me, and I feel like y'all are the same way, is that when I sing, I believe. Like yeah. if I, and, and maybe mm. it's the Absolutely. way he wired the human heart. Like if we can sing, Something like it's that sacrifice of praise. Sometimes. Yeah, it's because you're totally. like I don't feel this. Like I'm not sure that I even believe this right now. Yeah. but I'm gonna proclaim it over myself. There is something that shifts mm. in your spirit. And so I really thought it was just for me, but I sense the Lord saying, "Would you go out? Like, would you be willing to share these songs with other people?" And I was like, mm. "No." Uh-uh. No, <laughs> no. no. Like, I've been doing that for eight years. Yeah. That is crazy. I No, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom now. And he, yeah. it is, I'm so thankful. I, I think I let fear. And part mm. of it is from being a kid. Yeah. Of not wanting that. You knew what it looked like. What it, you knew the sacrifice that I is. The sacrifice. Yeah. I know that there's a cost. Yeah. And so, but I am so grateful. And we mm. get to have conversations with Emily. You know, she's getting older and older to understand some of this, but... She'll get sad sometimes when we leave. And mm. a lot of times we bring them too. But um, it's so fun to talk to her about like, hey, we're leaving because this is what God's called us to do mm. right now. And, and you're having that conversation. He's also called us to you. And mm. and the reason we're being faithful to leave and go is because one day he's going to call you to go. Mm. And we want you to say a surrendered yes to wherever he's leading you, whatever that looks like, even mm. if it's scary. Yeah. And I don't really want to leave you either, but I do want to be right. obedient to, to, yes. to use the gifts that he's mm. given. And so um, it has been such a gift. To, I feel like God was like, hey, could you just go be, I was experiencing so much freedom. I felt like he was like, will you just go be a mess in front of people? Mm. Yeah. Would you be willing? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, yeah. <laughs> I do not want to go do that. That sounds like a horrible that job. Sounds terrible. And, and then through being a mom, yeah, just a parent, like, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, you know how to do that. Oh, at the same time, half, half of our touring life as Love in the Outcome has been you've been pregnant. You've been pregnant. It's true. And then oh. learning, and you are. Well, the crazy thing is, you're like parenting in a fishbowl a little bit. Like yeah. you're, and it's like life on life, and so. Mm-hmm. What's beautiful about that is you you know a couple things. One, you can't do it by yourself. Yeah. Which I think I would have had the mentality like, I sure. got this. Like, mm-hmm. And you're like, I do not got this. Yeah. I need a lot of other people to help. Yes. Nannies, family, yep. friends, strangers. <laughs> anyone. <laughs> anyone there to wear an ergo carrier with a child in it. I need two and five. Has anyone seen my kid? I wish Together. that was a joke. Yeah. I wish that was no, not true. No, it is not. There are moments where you're like, this is intense. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 but there's such a beauty in, in, in that, too. And you're absolutely right. A beauty in knowing that there will certainly be wounds that our kids will carry from, from not that you intentionally wound them, but just from being yeah. a kid of a parent who's... Yeah. Broken and a human. Yeah. And so to know, <laughs> to have seen God heal so many of those wounds mm-hmm. and to take that step instead of being controlled by fear to say, okay, this is, this mm. feels like the scariest thing that you're asking me to do. Yeah. This is like, right. feels real close to home. Yeah. You know, like I just, right. I am, but I am, so, it felt like that, like, um, the Indiana Jones scene. Um, where like he's stepping off and it looks like he's going to die. Like he's stepping off and it looks like he's going to fall into a cliff. And then like the Chris's ground, favorite movie, he probably knows the exact only, only, the, only the penitent man will pass. <laughs> only the penitent man will pass. How amazing is that? Yeah. I mean, mm. repentance, right? Like, I mm. don't know. So there is that like surrendered humility of mm. stepping out where he's called us to be even when it costs you something yeah. and then getting the the joy of seeing like the ground raise up underneath mm. your feet over and over again. That's you know? amazing. 
Well, and isn't it crazy how, you know, even staying home with your kids can be this selfish decision when he is calling you you. to go out. Yeah. And isn't it, it's so personal. Like, (laughs) that still small voice is telling and asking us to know him in different ways. Yep. And step out in different ways, and you're, you know. And then I'm, I'm always like, Lord, I, I, I feel like there, there may be a day when He asks me to stay. Yes. And I feel like that will feel yes. like a death and yeah. really hard to, you know. So mm-hmm. it just, I, the, one of my favorite pieces of advice came from Mark Hall's wife. I'm totally blanking on her name. He's casting crown. He's in yes. casting crowns. His wife manages them. They've done their family on the road, homeschool, yeah. the whole bit, and. I was just asking her, do you have any wisdom? Yeah. You know, as a mama on the road. And she just said, you get your marching orders from the Lord. Mm. She was like, don't look at me. Don't look at, don't. She was like, because if you're asking him, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to be? She was like, you know that you're right. right. And it does not have to look like anybody else. She's like, I'm not saying you can't get wisdom from other people, but Mm. she was like, at the end of the day, you can know that you're like where he's saying it. And I was like, got it. Except for I don't got it. But man, I'm listening. Yeah. (laughs) That is good. That's 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 the point. I don't got it, but you got it. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. You got me and you got my family. Well, And, and I feel like that that has been what I felt Holy Spirit every time I say, just tell me what to do. Do you ever have those moments? Like, oh. could you just tell me what to do? You know, because you really want to get it right. Yeah. But there's just moments you literally do not know what to do. Yeah. But he's always just like, just listen to my voice and teach them to listen to my voice. That's that's kind of it. Yeah. And by yeah. you going out on the road and having those conversations with Emmy Lou is teaching her to listen to his voice, not just you. Yeah, listen to him. Which is terrifying to me. Because when I felt him say that, I was like, you're saying this to me when Milo's nine months old. Like, (laughs) I'm not ready to hear that one day he's not going to need my voice. He's always going to need mama's voice. But I was like, that's right. That's right. That That's going to, if I never left and I never went to do what mama's called to do and supposed to do, so that you had to ask Holy Spirit, Milo had to ask Holy Spirit, then I'm always in the gap. Yeah. And I'm like the safety net that I probably don't need to be all the time. So yeah. I, I think oh, the way you're living is like it awesome. Is, yeah. And it's hard. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are oh, days when I'm like. Girl. <laughs> you get in the car and you just break down, right? This is a lot. Yeah. And I, and there is it is like, a lot. There is that. People, I, I that, that question where people, I, y'all probably get this all the time. How do you balance? Oh, 100%. And, mm-hmm. and, and your family. <laughs> and you're like, what? Does anybody do that? Like, is anyone does balanced? That exist? <laughs> Help me with that, because I'm not. I, we are falling and tripping yeah. all the time, and then my hope is to like fall into his very capable arms, yeah. and that's usually where I end up mm-hmm. eventually. Um, it just sometimes takes a long takes longer. Second, some days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. There are different seasons where I'm more stubborn. Yeah. Uh, but it so is. that's good though. Cause I mean, when you say that one day he may call you to stay, that was what happened. We went from record one was just run and gun. Yeah. Faith looked like living on the edge yeah. and holding on for dear life. Everything was new and hard and crazy yeah. and intense. Yeah. And then record two was learning how to have a home life and then like, also touring. And we're like, whoa, whoa, put roots down. What? No, we just flirt with cities. We travel. We don't call anywhere home. It had become our identity, yeah. you know? <laughs> and um, so I just wonder for you from record one to record two and to now to record three, do you feel like there's different things you are carrying into those records that Jesus is oh. kind of asking you to talk about and live? Absolutely. I mean, I guess that is what it means to be an artist. I mean, you're yeah. like... Or f- I feel like this is true with y'all, but it is, you're just kind of like channeling where you are. Yes. Through the, the venue of a, of a song or in, you know, a a concert. And, um, I think, God has been so kind. And it's funny because I have had a kid really coordinate with every record. So somebody (laughs) was asking me, Yeah, they were like, Hmm. that's crazy and I'm like yeah. it's kind of awesome because you can look back and you can say okay 
Ooh, I was learning that God works in brokenness and that, that he's, exactly. he's very much there. The light is stronger than darkness on that first record. Second record, God is literally in the middle of suffering and suffering isn't the end of the story. And mm-hmm. then with this one, it's a kid's record. And so it's been, God is a good dad. He's a really good dad. Yeah. And more than being a mom in charge of kids or yeah. a person who's, you know, in a, a business, you know, you're like little CEO of your own company. Is yes. The art, you know, there's a lot just of layers. Like, there's a lot of layers of that, a lot of responsibility more before any of those things. Like, I'm God's kid. I'm his kid. Yeah. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. And he's going to take really good care of me, and then he's going to take care of my kids because they're his kids too. Yeah. And so it is that has been mm-hmm. such a gift to settle into, and wow, uh, for me. And I feel like I'm still I'm st- in process of that. Yeah. You know for sure. I so. want a copy of the kids. Oh record. man, it's been so fun. It's are your really kids fun. on it? They are. They're yeah. on it. That's they, awesome. Huck ro- roars on it. <laughs> he <It's>, roars. <laughs> That's it perfect. Sounds, it sounds like it's not too far really removed from the normal music that I write, but we had kids sing on, mm. I think, two of the songs, and so they were they were on all of that, and it's been a really, it's been a joy to write for them and have a little test audience mm. in your own home. That's you know, so cool. you're like, so I'd sing it for them, and then if they, just once, I'd sing it once, and if they weren't singing it by the end of the day... Mm. Like later that night, I'd be like, I need to do better. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd go back right? and try to write yeah. something. If this doesn't they... line up with Wheels on the Bus, which is where we're at, and like if they're not skip sing- to my I loo. want them to be singing <laughs> these truths. Like, totally. please, for because a you while. know what? In our, like Milo's two, just over two, he's in the nursery oh, so rhyme cute. stage. Yeah. Those nursery rhymes, they're a little messed up. A, oh, lot, yeah, a of lot of the of lyrics in those songs are they're messed dark. up. Dark. Yeah. Like some Rock of the lines, baby. yeah, terrible. I'm oh, like, yeah. no, lost no, no. my partner. What will I do? It's like, okay, uh, wow. What do we got? I don't know. Uh, I want no. you the the like when what? The bow breaks the cradle, fall, yeah, and no. down will come, baby cradle, and all. It's why so is this strange? So strange? I know. I so we need your record. A woman in Africa, and she was like, "This is a children's song." Oh, <laughs> like through the translator, and I was yeah. like. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that I'll never sing again. I'm so yeah. sorry. I'm gonna go write my own kids' record. I'll be right back. This song is terrible. Although if we're going down that road, a lot of worship songs are terrifying too. You know, it's, like the old rugged cross. Uh, You're uh, like, oh, this yeah. is intense. There is a lot Gosh. of yeah. There's thinking about what we sing is now when you have little ones singing it back to you is right. a You're big like, deal. Oh man, yeah. but it is there is something so beautiful. I, I think the process of writing more specifically for children where you're like I think I might overcomplicate things sometimes sure <laughs> oh. like oh right just let's distill this down like hmm. you are loved you are deeply loved and so you, that like Jesus loves me that's a strong one it's actually a really good song right but you're like okay actually <laughs> if I can stay there and start right. there and remain there and abide there it changes everything yeah and anyway so I'm no I love that Sorry if I didn't bring around anything you actually wanted. That would like. No, are any. you kidding me? We have no amazing. agenda. Everyone that like, if we've been like, you know, you'll go on someone's podcast, they come on yours. They're like, so what's yours about? And we're always like, life. Yeah, <laughs> we don't have any super big out. agenda. <laughs> that was Which I was a little worried about at first because I'm like, I do. There is part of me that loves this real specific ones. If I need sure. a quick fix, sure, I'll be like, okay, I'll go to that ten minute this. Yeah, that's not us. But that's just not us. Yeah. It's more the like. Hey, when we're having a glass of wine and we're not on stage, this is what we talk about. This is about. what we talk about. Yeah. This is the real stuff. Good. And we do talk about that on stage, but it's our life has been 15 minute sets. So right. I think it was birthed out of the <laughs> yeah, desire like, to do more. It'd be great to have a longer conversation. That, that is what it came from. Literally. We're like, oh, we're in our own house. We don't have to do a sound bite. We can talk. Oh, man. You, you should call it Let's Keep Talking. Let's Keep Talking. <laughs> Maybe we should have called that. I mean, it's like, yes. hey, we only get not very much time with you. So, like, so let's true. hang out for longer. Don't so leave. True. <laughs> don't leave. And, and I think, too, because you, if you don't keep talking, you sometimes forget that you have more to say. Oh, man. Absolutely. Well, and I have to, like, I'm, I don't know about y'all, but I'm like, I've got to... I am just like have spiritual amnesia, regular mm-hmm. amnesia. I, yeah. I forget mm-hmm. so easily. And our work as believers is to remember. Yes. Like, yes. It's like, okay, 
Let mm-hmm. me tell, because if we don't tell the stories yeah. of how God's working, it's like, you can't, yeah. it's easy. It's so true. To forget. We talked about that too, because we're not building altars, you know, like in right. the Old Testament, but our songs in this cool way can be such a stake in the ground of what has happened in our life. And we've talked oh, yeah. about that a lot. Like I want Milo and Ziggy to know, because our life has been Canada our whole life and then we were on a visa in Nashville and had two babies and so, like it's really bizarre the way the path has turned out yeah. but I want them to know you weren't born in Nashville Tennessee because mom and dad signed a record deal and got famous or something you're here because of what God did and how he called That's us right. here and the miracles he's done in our life That's and right. you're born here because of this and this and this that God has done and I want to tell them that story over and over and right. isn't it cool how kids want the repetition it's amazing Say it, and I'm that, again. I'm that way. Do it again. Mm-hmm. What is it? Is it Chesterton that says we've sinned and grown old? Because mm-hmm. like, when God makes yeah. a daisy, he uh, he says, "Do it again. Do it again." Do it again. <laughs> like, <laughs> isn't that beautiful? Like, and like oh, lately, man. Milo is just that's what he wants. He wants that same story because it's so comforting to him. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm learning a lot about how God loves me because of how Milo yeah. loves me yeah. and you know what he needs and. I learned a lot today. Oh, man. I'm going to go back through this podcast <laughs> and write down notes because there were literal Holy Spirit moments. Oh, you know when he highlights that. things yep. for you? Yep. I so love, thanks I for sharing. Just Thank sharing you, yourself. Thanks Thank you. for having me. We love Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. Let's hang out in Nashville again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's, let's talk some more. Let's double date. Let's keep talking. Okay. Yes. Let's keep talking. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. We'll love it. <laughs>